I'm Colin Bateman and I'm sitting in No Alibis, which is Belfast's uh, finest and only mystery bookstore. Uh, it, it's a very important place to me. It's uh, the setting for several of my books and it's inspired me to come up with uh, a character called Mystery Man. He has no name, uh, but he uh, investigates very strange crimes around our wonderful city of Belfast. No Alibis is uh, very important to me and it's very important uh, to the creative community in Belfast. It's, it's kind of a mecca for writers, uh, for readers. Uh, it almost acts like a community centre. You come in here for a cup of coffee, you hear music, you hear readings. Uh, so it, it's just a huge attraction. Sure. I think Belfast has been hugely important to my work and I'm very lucky to grow up in and around Belfast because there's so many stories here and they've been reflected in what I do, right from my first book, uh, Divorcing Jack, right through to Mystery Man more recently. Uh, there's just this tremendous background. The language is fantastic. The people are great when they're not killing each other. Uh, and it's just been a huge inspiration to me. I do come from the crime writing fraternity, but when I was growing up, I was hugely influenced by science fiction. Uh, and the fact that two of science fiction's best known authors actually came from Belfast, uh, inspired me to write my own science fiction when I was starting out. They were Bob Shaw and James White. Bob Shaw uh, wrote a, a, a famous novel called Orbitsville, which won many awards, and James White wrote a whole series about an intergalactic hospital, uh, which were just uh, huge in their sphere uh, and influenced me, actually, to become a writer. There aren't many private eyes in Belfast, and now, apparently, there's one fewer. I know this because his shop was right next to mine. His name was Malcolm Carlyle, and he seemed a decent sort. He would call in for a chat and a browse now and again when business was slow. His business, that is. His business was called Private Eye, big yellow letters on a black background. Then one day he didn't open up, and I never saw him again, and that was the start of my problems because he was still listed in the yellow pages. But when people couldn't get a response on the phone, well, they thought, he must be good, he's so busy, he's changed his number, gone ex-directory, so they'd come down to check what was happening with their cases, find the door locked, stand back and take a look at the place and see my shop next door and think there must be some kind of a connection because you don't have a shop called Private Eye and a shop called No Alibis sitting side by side for no reason at all. So they'd come in and furtively browse through the crime books, all the time eyeing me up behind the counter, trying to work out if I could possibly be connected to the private eye they were looking for, and if there was a connection between the shops, and whether I did this book selling thing as a kind of respectable cover for my nighttime manoeuvres on the cold, dark streets of Belfast. They'd gotten it wrong, of course. Book selling is more cutthroat than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> 